You know what time it is. It's trussin' time. Throw away your chicken casserole today. This is Julia Child's casserole roasted chicken. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So we're in Mastering the Art of French Cooking, volume one today, from Julia Child. Of course, this is my mint condition copy of the book. And, you know, there's something to be said about a very well-used cookbook. I must say, I like it like this. It's got all its battle scars on it. You can see the recipes that I've tackled just from how well used the pages are. You know, there's some food splotted on them. There's got the snail on the front, the cover's falling off. I like it like this. It's got characters. It means more to me this way than it would in perfect condition, you know, using little felt gloves with it. So, you know, I use this every day. I cook with it almost every day. This is my book. Anyway, I found this recipe, casserole roasted chicken with tarragon. Poulet, poulet, à l'estragon. And it sounds really interesting. I've never casserole roasted chicken before. It says here, when a chicken is cooked this way, it is trussed, browned in butter and oil, then left to roast in a covered casserole with herbs and seasoning. It is a very good method as the buttery, aromatic steam in the casserole gives the chicken great tenderness and flavor. All right, so if you start at the very beginning of this recipe, you're gonna miss out on a pretty neat step, which is on the next page, optional mushroom stuffing, fos duxel. And uh, yeah, I'm choosing to exercise that option. I'd love to have some mushroom stuffing with this casserole roasted chicken today. So yeah, we gotta get that going first before we even move on to anything else. So I'm gonna start with three quarters of a pound, 340 grams of mushrooms. I'm gonna wash them, but I'm not getting into it today. Let's just not do this today. We all know where I stand on the issue. I prefer to wash my mushrooms, but if you don't wanna wash your mushrooms, don't wash them. Keep it your own business. <laughs> it's not like you're just letting them sit in the water for a few minutes or anything like that. You just, it's a quick, quick rinse. Get all the stuff off them and then dry them and it's done. Moving on, I promise. It's just they're grown in shit. Excuse me. Now I'm gonna use my food processor to uh, finally chop up my mushrooms. I've used this method before. It works wonders. It does a better job than I could ever do. And it saves me a whole heap of time. Just a few pulses here, nothing crazy. A little more than a pulse. Beautiful. So I have the chicken giblets from the chicken that I haven't introduced you guys to just yet. We'll get to that soon. The chicken liver that I'm just gonna finally chop up into itty bitty pieces. I believe this is the gizzard. I need the gizzard peeled and chopped. I believe it's already peeled. Yeah, this is peeled for sure because unpeeled would be like a big, yeah. Parsley and tarragon. One shallot finely chopped. Now, whenever I have a recipe that involves mushrooms, when it's coming from this cookbook, she wants me to extract their juices using a cloth and I like squeeze it and all the juice comes out. I squeeze out as much juice as possible. That is just nuts when you look at it. It's starting to feel like it's kind of a pointless step because these things dry out when they're heated up on the pan anyway. If the juices were gonna be used for a different part of the recipe, okay, maybe I'd consider it, but today they're not, so I'm not gonna do it. Baby, light my fire. Medium heat, half an ounce of butter. You know what, actually, I'm thinking it might be more beneficial first to not even add the butter. Instead, what I'm gonna do is add them into a pan that doesn't have any butter, heat these up, the moisture will dry out of them, and then I will add them into the pan with the butter. I don't know if this makes sense to anyone else, but it makes sense to me in this current moment of my life. You see what I mean there, all that moisture? Go away. Into vapor. I'll be honest, this is kind of taking a long time. I probably could have just done that towel thing, but uh, I hate that step, so. Okay, see, and just like that, all that water is gonzo. Now I'm gonna just transfer the mushrooms into the pan with the butter. Was it pointless to do all that? Maybe so. Well, I'll never know until the day I release this video and then someone will tell me. And then in with the mushrooms, gonna add a tablespoon of chopped shallot and just a little bit of oil in there as well. It's supposed to be a dessert spoon worth. Saute this up for six to eight minutes. Now with the skillet I just used for the demoisturizing of the mushrooms, let's get reuse this pan. Medium heat, a half ounce of butter, add in the giblets. 
Uh, I was supposed to add the gizzard first and then the liver, but I added them both at the same time. Which is fine. I'm cooking this for four minutes in total. How are we doing over here? Looking good. Here we go now, here we go. Mushrooms to a mixing bowl, along with the giblets. Quarter cup, 50 milliliters of Madeira wine. Reduce it down, but also gather up all the fawn, even though I don't know if that is actually fawn, if it doesn't have like meat involved. Maybe it is. Reduce it. Once that's been boiled down to all but just a little spoonful, I'm gonna pour it in with the mushrooms and the gib giblets, the giblets. Blend all the rest of the ingredients that I have already prepped, including one ounce, 28 grams of breadcrumbs, two tablespoons of cream cheese. Just go with it. Half an ounce of softened butter, half a teaspoon of chopped tarragon, and then this is two tablespoons of chopped parsley quarter teaspoon of salt, and a big ass pinch of pepper. With the snowman, mix it all together. So that's my mushroom stuffing. Now I need to let this cool down, which is no problem because I have to clean all this stuff up anyway. Hello. So I want some color to this dish, so I'm gonna add a couple more carrots than what Julia recommends, this twig variety. Two onions. Chicken. Here's my bird. It's a three pound chicken today. Smaller than I'm, you know, I'm usually getting, but uh, that's what she's calling for. So I'm just gonna stick closely to exactly that. It's trussing time. So I got my needle and my twine. Okay, so I've done this a few times. I'm not gonna exactly go off the book. I'm gonna see if it's still up here. Firstly, I wanna stick the needle through the lower part of the carcass and right through, tied around the Oh no, I need slack, man, I need slack. Tie it around the one drumstick first, and then through the tip of the breast, around the other drumstick, then through the carcass, where like the drumstick and uh, the joint meet up. Pop goes the wings. Fold those wings akimbo, like I got handcuffs behind my back. Um, then the needle goes through the wings. I draw the string nice and tight. Honestly, it could be a bit tighter around here. And then nice and tight around the legs. Just make sure everything is, ooh yeah. Oh shit, what's going on here? All right, so that chicken has been trussed. I'm supposed to add everything into the chicken first before I trussed it up. <laughs> the stuffing, the mushroom stuffing that you literally just made. Okay, so she's not really clear if I'm gonna use the mushroom stuffing, do I just drop all the other stuff that she was initially telling me to put into the cavity of this bird? Because if I didn't have the mushroom stuffing, I'd be doing a whole other routine. But I think since I have this, I'm still gonna add the other stuff, I think. You need a pinch of pepper. It's like a quarter teaspoon of salt. So mix the salt and pepper together and then into the cavity, shake it about, hokey pokey style. Have an ounce of butter, I'm gonna split it in half. I'm only gonna use half of it into the cavity. It's just kind of like, yeah. Since this is tarragon chicken, I wanna really one up on the tarragon in addition to the tarragon that's already in the mushroom stuffing. So she says three or four sprigs of tarragon. I mean, these are really big sprigs. How about one sprig, two sprigs, three sprigs. There you go. Into the cavity as well. Cooled off mushroom stuffing. Also get it in there. Yeah, that's as much as I can pack that in. Kind of tighten everything back up again. Dry the chicken. And then the other half ounce of butter. Just, yeah, you know what to do. Lather. Lather it up, lather it up. And we lather with the, <laughs> with the butter. So for any casserole roasted chicken, you need a casserole. It's the biggest pot I got. Gonna be getting good use out of you today. Moderately high, please. Oh my God, you're never gonna believe it. More butter, it's like another ounce worth. Yep, fuck it, so half a tablespoon of oil. Okay, and then add the chicken breast side down. So the goal is here to brown all over this chicken. It's like two to three minutes per side, but you really want to focus on the thighs and the breasts. And in total, it's going to take around 10 to 15 minutes. And yeah, just going to be making sure I'm regulating the heat so that the butter doesn't burn. Whatever method works best. This is working for me right now until this chicken is too hot. 
flip it over. You gotta be careful not to damage the skin while I'm moving it. So a couple of wooden spoons. Flip it on its side. Aye. Tilt it. And the other side. Cool, pour out the browning fat if it has burned. Uh, only because it's kind of burnt, not really though. And more butter. Pour the vegetables in. Saute these up for five minutes, but don't brown them. It is a perfect time to preheat the oven. 325 degrees. Add a quarter teaspoon of salt. Three or four sprigs of tarragon. Uh, you know, we'll do five or six. I'm not driving. Okay, over here, let's salt the chicken. The chicken goes on top of the vegetables, breast side up. Aluminum foil on top, cover it until you hear the chicken sizzling. Although, uh, I can't because it's covered. We'll be listening though. Ow. Oh my God, I forgot about my new toy. So I got a meat thermometer, it's my new toy, and I'm in the new toy phase, so I wanna use it as much as possible. And this is the perfect opportunity, so I can, you know, keep track of the temp of that chicken. I mean, it's a thermometer. This thing is only 20 bucks, and it could have saved me hundreds of dollars in overcooked meat. I take the chicken out of the oven at 155. Into the, okay, into the breast, lengthwise, lid on top. And of course, everything smells like licorice. We're right on track. Into the middle of the oven. Of course, Julia has her recommendations of how long I should roast this for. She says an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes. However, because I added the mushroom stuffing, it's supposed to add on an extra 10 to 15 minutes. But since I have my thermometer today, I don't need to worry so much about this, which is nice because it's always wrong for me. <laughs> as soon as I put that chicken in the oven, look what came in the mail. It's a new oven thermometer that is gonna replace this. You know, the maiden voyage. Throughout this cook sesh, I just have to baste it a couple times in the butter, in the juices. The skin isn't as brown as I was hoping it would be. Hello. So I'm gonna take the tin foil off. Yeah, I just want that a bit browner. I'm gonna turn the broiler on, but the thing is I don't wanna overcook the chicken, so I gotta do this really quickly. Chicken is cooked to my liking. So I gotta move the chicken to a serving dish, but I don't wanna ruin the skin again, so maybe this... <sighs> Cover that up. So Julia does this thing where she adds the vegetables, and then she never mentions them again. I think she wants me to discard them. I'd love to have them part of my finished dish, you know? So I'm gonna have them join in on the fun. Let's keep them next to the chicken in the serving dish. Remove the trussing strings. Just keep the chicken over there. Okay, my casserole dish back onto the stove. And let me just take a second to regroup. Probably a lot of stuff that could have been done while the chicken was in the oven, but we're here now, so let's just figure it out. So I need what? I'm just gonna pour in like a little, little bit of a Madeira wine. Just a little, and uh, what is this? A tablespoon or so of cornstarch. Give that the whole heave-ho. And some tarragon. Around roughly one and a half cups, 350 mils of beef stock. And the roasting juices. Bring that up to a simmer. Get the coagulated fawn off the pan. Skim the fat until you have all but a tablespoon left. Or I'm gonna add in my slurry. Raise the heat to high and boil this rapidly. I need something to strain it into. Uh, yeah, strain it into this. This might be a good idea or it's a bad idea, but I'm gonna strain it into this little thing here. This cute little thing. Like if you had a sauce boat, she says, use a sauce boat, I don't have one. That could definitely use a little salt. You're never gonna believe it, but that's more butter. This time it's enrichment butter. Finally, around two tablespoons of chopped tarragon. Chicken is done when the drumstick move in their sockets and the juice runs clear yellow. Pour a spoonful of the sauce over the chicken. That should do it. Order up. Just 
want to corral everything into one perfect bite. We got a little of everything on this bite. Yeah, the mushroom stuffing was a good idea. Yeah, it was. Mm. This is one of the most flavorful roasts of chicken I've ever roasted. The tarragon is nice, because I don't normally eat tarragon like really that often. And uh, just to have a dish that is just like, it's highlighting the tarragon, it's really, it's quite lovely. I'm sure tarragon has a love-hate relationship with a lot of people because of that, because of the licorice taste, but this is a dish that I could make again and again and again. Now keep in mind, I didn't serve this with any sides, obviously. She says you could use sauteed potatoes, grilled tomatoes, put those on the plate too, but I didn't. So that mushroom stuffing really helped balance everything together because it had that umami flavor to it. Ooh, Jamie, look at you and your big words. But yeah, it did. So it really helped balance out that tarragon. Chicken was cooked beautifully, tons of flavor in it. The only thing is I lost track of how much butter I used. So next time I'd probably just try to rein that in a bit. So uh, I don't know what else I should say. I gotta clean all the dishes so my mind is elsewhere right now. It is a big ass mess today. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. That sucks. Patreon, Patreon, Patreon is the best way to support the show. It's the single best way. And there's extra stuff over there. And I release it as frequently as I can. So if you want a little extra more, there's live streams, you can talk directly. There's behind the scenes, see how the show is made. Uh, Q and A's, you can have the name at the end of the videos like these lovely people. That's all because of Patreon. So if you wanna click this link right here, it should be right here. If not, it's in the description. Of course, if that doesn't interest you, you just want to stay right here and watch the show, that's totally cool too. Just ignore all this. I'll see you later. Bye.